all the information is out there. Like we just gotta like read the bottle and kind of get familiar with that. So in, in order to kind of get into the, the ingredients mm -hmm. of it all, you think that one needs to know color, color theory, theory yeah. of just like what color mixed with what color is yeah. what color. If you're gonna get into painting mm -hmm. and then try to bridge that theory over into tattooing, mm -hmm. you are dealing with different pigments somewhat. Say you're using brown. It pretty much directly, directly translates to transparent iron oxide red. Mm. Well, that's gonna behave differently if you're expecting it to behave like burnt umber, right? Those yeah. two colors are and not gonna do- it's transparent, right? right? You can't use it on its own. If, if you're using it and you're expecting it to do things that burnt umber is gonna do, yeah. you're gonna have different reactions. Yeah. And so that's kind of the issues that I kept running into, was like, all right, well, if I'm using brown, the complementary color of that would be blue. Mm -hmm. So why don't I just use like a pure blue? And then you'd mix, say, blue concentrate, is what it'd be in Eternal, with just a pure brown, it would not gray out or desaturate. Mm. In fact, it would sort of tilt one way or the other, depending on where those colors line up, right? Mm. And so I put all those colors on a color wheel, and then as I plotted it on the color wheel, I could see the brown wasn't directly across from where blue lined up. It was actually a little bit off, which is why we were getting those reactions. And then understanding too that it was transparent oxide red and not like a burnt umber, you're gonna get inconsistencies of that. 